Welcome, MYP students, and welcome to middle school. I would like to welcome my fellow students. As I'm Ms. Farah, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this academic year of 2023-2024. As we embark on a journey of knowledge, growth, and discovery, let us embrace the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Together, we will create an environment of collaboration, innovation, and mutual respect. As MYP students, I would like to start the introductory video with a famous quote. Every sunset is an opportunity to rest. Every sunrise begins with new eyes. And I'd like you all to keep this in mind, that every day is a new day and every day is a new opportunity, whether to learn, acquire, or acknowledge experiences or situations. Another thing I'd like you all to keep in mind as middle school or as MYP learners are the following pillars that I, as teachers we expect from you. As responsible, students and caring students, we expect that you ask questions and think critically. You learn across different subjects and connect ideas. For instance, we expect students to ask questions on a regular basis throughout the class and think critically in the sense that they're analyzing the situation itself to come up with new ideas and perspectives. Also, in terms of connecting ideas or different subjects, you will perform an IDU, which stands for an interdisciplinary unit, where our unit will be integrated with another unit. For example, if we were to do the Renaissance and discuss the Renaissance and its impact, perhaps in art, you'll be taking something reflective to the Renaissance and the time era itself. You might be expected to draw a portrait in art reflecting the Renaissance and in the I and F to perform a play or a report that reflects the impact of the Renaissance on our time, place, and space. As teachers, we also ex expect that students express themselves in writing and speaking. When creating a report, your ideas build up on each other in an effective manner. And when you present your ideas, they're also cohesive and coherent. Moreover, we expect that you respect and understand different cultures. In a multicultural setting, there are going to be more or diverse perspectives. And as students, you must all respect different, uh, different perspectives and different opinions because everyone is entitled to their perspective. Care for others and reflect on their actions. Make honest and ethical choices. Try new things and take manageable risks. Balance school, health, and activities. And this is essential, as it is also a part of your IB profile, is to be balanced. Your ability to self-manage yourself. And mostly, all of you do it. You tend to finish your assignments, your homework, in order to do whatever activity you please, perhaps after 4 p.m. or 5. You care about, you must care about the world issues and act responsibly. As IB learners, you must work together and value different opinions. Become independent learners, and you shall learn about becoming independent learners, as there are multiple resources evident on BC, where you will use them in order to read and understand new concepts or deepen your understanding about a particular issue. Let's say, for instance, someone um, is very enthusiastic about math. They might want to understand more things about math. Therefore, they will use the resources on BC and investigate or research what else do they wish to know about math. And finally, a most important point, as teachers, we expect our students to review their progress and learn from it. I shall tell you here about myself, I personally always focus on this point. I like to review my progress by uh, creating a formative. 
to ensure that my students have acquired the knowledge that I wish them to acquire during a specific unit. And this and your and your performance will reflect on whether I as a teacher have been successful in transferring whatever I wish to transfer. Similarly, as students, I expect that you review your progress and learn from it. If you feel that you have failed in a specific aspect, I expect from you to review me first, and then I shall guide you to the path to success. Moving on to what individuals and society is and what is the main idea of it, what do I mean by individuals and society? Students studying individuals and societies in the MIP gain knowledge about individuals, groups, and their interactions. They research politics, economics, history, and geography. They have a deeper understanding of the world as a result, developing into responsible global citizens. They learn through participating in debates, projects, and presentations. In other words, you will learn more than one discipline throughout the individual societies. We will focus on history, economics, politics, geography, and perhaps even art, or why we humans live as we are today. Settlements, perhaps. Okay, so uh, individual and societies covers a large scope. It is like the umbrella, and under the umbrella are subcategories, which you are all familiar with. Moreover, this leads to how we formulate our units. Our units in the MYP system are divided into four. Unit one and two will be done in the first semester, and unit three and four will be done in the fourth in the second in the second semester. Each and every semester and each and every unit focuses on two ATL skills. ATL skills stands for approaches to learning. How will you learn the unit? What are the main skills that are being focused throughout the entire unit? For example, in unit one, if we were doing a unit about civilization and we expect students to formulate a research report indicating the impact of ancient civilizations on our time, place, and space, the ATL skills that will be covered will be research skills and perhaps social collaboration or thinking skills critical thinking. You may perhaps use appropriate methods to research and acquire reliable and valuable resources and write an effective report answering a specific or a targeted prompt. And you will collaborate with your peers in groups perhaps to create this project, or you might use your thinking skill in order to investigate, analyze, interpret information, and write a compelling argument at the very end. Moreover, this does not necessarily mean that in each and every unit, we're covering only two ATL skills that we're not applying other skills. At the end of the day, when you think about the pillars of the ATL, you tend to cover them almost every day in your life. You tend to communicate. You research if you wish to know something, perhaps a phone number. You might research it online. Um, you self-manage yourself, finish your tasks early so that you can enjoy your own activities afterwards. You collaborate with your classmates and you think critically and creatively to come up with new solutions and to analyze an existing situation. So therefore, in other words, you will use other ATLs throughout the unit However, in each and every unit, we'll be focusing on two explicitly and implicitly. This is the, the, uh, the units one to four are based on key concepts. Each and every unit will focus on a large key concept that highlights the entire unit. For example, if we're talking about ancient civilization, then this will focus on time, place, and space. And this is one of the 
key concepts that will be covered in individuals and societies, apart from time, place, and space, global interaction will be also covered throughout individuals and societies. To add, we'll be covering change. And finally, systems. These are the four key concepts that we covered in the Individuals and Societies MYP year one. Every unit has two forms of assessment. Throughout the year, we'll be performing formative assessments and summative assessments. The formative assessments are a form of informal assessment. In other words, you will be assessed in formally throughout the entire MYP experience. Anything you say or answer in the class is a form of a formative assessment because you are assessed orally within a specific context. In addition, any assignment, homework, participation, group work is a form of formative assessment. Apart from formative assessment, the formal assessment is called a summative assessment. To elaborate, it is the assessment that you will be marked on from zero to eight. The summative assessment will be divided based on the unit and on the TSR, the task specific rubric associated with individuals and societies. And this includes knowledge and understanding, which is criterion A. Criterion B is investigating. Criterion C is communicating. Criterion D is thinking critically. To elaborate, criterion A focuses on knowledge and understanding of the unit itself. For example, defining a term that is reflective to a specific unit. For example, what is a map? Define the term map. This highlights your knowledge and understanding of the context itself and the content. Criterion B, on the other hand, focuses on investigating. Investigating highlights your ability to research and find information to answer a particular research question that you will be formulating. Criterion C is communicating this investigation, perhaps by creating a presentation or any form of a uh, presentational style, whether PowerPoint, a poster, a brochure, etc. You'll be communicating your investigation and highlighting a specific action plan that you have used throughout the entire experience. Apart from that, you will also indicate the resources that have been used in order to ensure your reliability and credibility in creating the investigation itself. And finally, Criterion D illustrates thinking critically, which means carefully looking at information, ideas, and issues to understand them deeply. It's about asking questions, checking sources, and understanding why things happen. This helps you see the bigger picture and make smarter choices. Also, in this criterion, you'll be expected to evaluate resources and analyze the resource in the form of OPVL, the origin of the source, is it primary or secondary? The purpose of the source, the value of the source, and the limitation of the source. And this will be elaborated more in depth throughout your experience. Finally, to summarize, I would like to finish off this, um, this recording by stating, Wisdom is not a product of schooling, but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it. And this indicates that you all are going to be lifelong learners, attempting to acquire knowledge throughout your entire experience as learners, whether MYP students or later on as DP, IB students or AP students. Good luck, everyone. I wish you the best and let this be a new beginning.